All right, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a quick look in the box of the new Trumpeter Chinese Z-10 attack helicopter. So this is China's essential equivalent to the US Apache or Cobra, something like that. Um, the first flight of this helicopter, I believe, took place in April, I wanna say, of 2003. I think that was a prototype. And it officially, I guess, went into service in, I think, late 2012, early 2013. Not a whole lot of kits available of this helicopter. I think the only other kit available is a 172nd version done by Trumpeter also. This 48 scale version is kit number 05820. And as you can see, we have not been in this box. We're gonna cut it open and take a look. So I'm gonna not cut myself. Sorry for the noise. All right, so that is the box, not much on it. You get a side view of the helicopter, some little photo etch decals right there, and not a lot of decals either. Little blurb about the helicopter. Yeah, so we're going to look in the box here. Um, I don't believe there's many schemes available for this also. So, so a little paperwork, not very important. Then you have this, I believe, to be the clear parts. We'll take a look in a minute. You get one sprue, which is the fuselage halves right there. You get another sprue of the rotor blades right there. This is wrapped up. I don't know what's in there. This is the sprue with the cockpit and some other little details, the instrument panel, stuff like that. The photo etch. Another sprue of small details. I think this is armament actually in the wheels. Decal sheet, instructions, and that is it. So let me get all this out of the way. We'll look at the instructions first and then we will come back and look at the parts. Be right back. All right. Let's look at the instructions. So typical trumpeter sort of landscape format, side opening booklet. Again, kit number 08, or 05820. T10 tech helicopter, open it up. Parts map right there. Really not a whole lot of parts to this kit. It is 148 scale. Trumpeter, if you're listening, 135th scale, please. It's not a big helicopter. So two marking options, there's overall black and overall black. I believe there is a scheme that I've seen photos of that's flying around in this sort of brown and green sort of uh, like a Southeast Asia type camouflage, but I don't know if that's a prototype or if it's just a new scheme that Trumpeter didn't find they were able to include, but I'm going to do some research and probably build mine in that scheme because this overall black is, let's be honest, a little boring. So that's the markings, the painting guide, color callouts right there. Not much to really talk about there. So we'll get that out of the way. Back to the instructions. So instructions start off, you're building the fuselage halves, adding the exhausts, cockpit details. We will look at how detailed these parts are. I suspect they are not going to be super accurate to the real aircraft just because of the nature of the Chinese military and access to, to all that. That being said though, um, if, if they have access, it, it'll, it'll probably be pretty good. So the tail rotor, little module right there, gun that mounts under the chin. We have various sensors, everything going in the fuselage, the rotor hub, I believe, everything being locked in in halves. Adding the clear parts, I'm wondering if that's, if you're able to leave part of it open, that'd be nice. The rotor head being added in, some details under the canopy, don't forget to add those. Oh yeah, so you can leave a couple of these hatches open right there, so that's nice. Adding some of the exhaust fill, or the intake filters, more, um, it's nice to see this actually, more, um, I wish more manufacturers would do this, the photo etch for the windshield wipers, because plastic always looks a little chunky and out of scale. So yeah, photo etch is nice for those parts canopy or the sort of the hinged doors in there. Q 
here, adding landing gear, adding the little stub wings, little tiny stub wings, the some uh, sensors on the fuselage right there, photo etch details going into those, details on the underside of the fuselage. Not entirely a fan of how they have this seam going down and crossing over all of these panels. Like this one looks like it has a lot of molded rivet detail on it, so that'll be interesting to see. Hopefully the fit is good. And then crossing all these little mounting points for all these details. So you're gonna be hoping that the seam is good, otherwise you'll be doing a lot of cleanup and trying not to erase detail as you're sanding. So yeah, adding more details to the airframe, a lot of grab handles, various little sensors and such. I think those are steps up there to get onto the tail for maintenance. Adding these uh, wire cutters. This is a rocket pod, you're making two of them. I, I honestly, I've only seen this thing in photos at air shows, so they're loaded up with a bunch of random ordnance. I'm not sure exactly, some kind of Chinese anti-tank missile going on two pylons. It looks like you have a rack of four of them, so very similar to a rack of Hellfires. A little unguided rocket pod, one each wing. Nothing really interesting there. There's not a lot, a whole lot of options for Chinese ordnance available on the market. So yeah, that's it actually. It's 15 steps. And if you're gonna build out of the box, one color. So yeah, not a lot to discuss there. Gonna get this out of the way, get some parts out of bags. So we're not listening to plastic rustle and then we'll come back. Cool, and we're back with the parts. So we'll start with the obvious, uh, the fuselage halves, which is the most important part of this helicopter, obviously. So it's molded in halves, as we saw in the instructions. Each half has nicely recessed detail. So you get recessed rivets, recessed grates, but also complemented with some raised sort of hatches and hinges of sorts. So those all paint up very nicely. That's very nicely molded there little vent detail on the bottom, everything nice and sharp. It'll come out to about, let's see on the cutting mat here, about, I'd say about 11 inches long when it's built with the tail rotor and the uh, sensor ball and the gun on the front, it'll be a little longer than that. But yeah, so left and right halves, inside, not a whole lot to talk about. There's some slots, obviously, for mounting items, some, some ejector pin marks, and that's about it. And yeah, I'll be honest, I don't like the way that Trumpeter does these molding gates, because you're going to have to clean up not only the surface it's molded on, but also the mating surface. So make sure you use a nice sort of flat sanding stick, sand that smooth, make sure you don't cut too deep when you're removing them and put like a divot in the plastic that you have to fill, go slowly, it'll be fine. Also, not really ideal to see exhausts in halves because you'll be cleaning up a seam. Maybe some company will come out with 3D printed replacements here, but probably not likely because this is probably not going to be a super popular kit, at least outside the Asian market. Also, what's not so great is these sort of mounting uh, holes are actually in the intake or in the exhaust. So if you do look far enough in, you will see them. That's not great. It's not the end of the world, but just not great. Again, other fuselage half, molded details, <clears throat> some recessed, some raised, excuse me. Yeah. Otherwise, not a whole lot to talk about. Fuselage halves. Okay, we'll get that out of the way. This is the next sprue, which is the rotor blades. The rotor blades actually do have a little bit of sag molded into them, so that is nice. I'd like to see more manufacturers do that. Obviously, if you wanted to display this in flight, not the ideal scenario, but I don't think most people do that. So yes, molded in sag, which is nice. And then you have the seats, really quite basic. I forget if there are photo edge seat belts. I don't believe there are. Actually, there are. So photo edge seat belts, go onto these, make your seats. The rocket pods are done in halves. So you're going to have to be cleaning up a seam down the halves of those. And then a front cap and a rear cap that go on the end. So, yeah. Not a whole lot to talk about. Next sprue is this sprue. This sprue was all wrapped up. I took the 
foam off to so we could look at it, spruce C. So this one contains sort of the landing gear, which is molded in one piece, the tail rotor, all those little grab handles, which are very nicely molded. I don't really see much of an, a seam down the edges. Obviously, be really careful cleaning these up as you're snipping them off the sprue so they don't go flying. I suspect you could easily replace these with wire, which is something that I might consider doing just for strength and also because I'll probably end up losing one or two of these. So other than that, everything else cleanly molded, nothing really crazy to talk about. There is a little bit of a seam down the edge of the landing gear. You can kind of catch it there, sort of right there. So a little bit of cleanup, a little scraping required, but nothing crazy. So next sprue is, we'll go, we'll try to go in sprue E. This is the, those kind of weird looking anti-tank missiles, I'm guessing. They are molded as one piece, but they do have a pretty significant seam down the edge or a mold mark. I don't know if that's actually a mold mark or if that's supposed to be there. Yeah, I don't know. Either way, check your references, if you can find any, and see if you're going to be cleaning that up. Otherwise, they are molded in one piece, so if that seam line is supposed to be there, which is because it's not going all the way down the body, it kind of sort of curves around a little bit at the top there. You can kind of catch that right there. I don't know. That's weird. But if it's supposed to be there, great. If it's not you're going to be doing some scraping and cleaning and sanding. So uh, wheels are molded in halves. The fronts have a little bit of hub detail. The rears are blank. And then you have the kind of the, like the tail caps of those anti-tank missiles. Yeah, that's about it. Nothing really interesting here. A pretty basic kit. This sprue is interesting. This is sprue B. This is the cockpit and some of the internals, the sort of the sensor, the engine intake screens would have been nice to see these in photo etch but i'll be honest trying to bend photo etch and have it conform to that shape and then potentially having to add framing to it is probably it would have probably been unstraightforward so this is probably next best option paint it up throw a black wash in there i think you'll be okay but cockpit tub right there is i'll be honest quite basic the there's some switches in there, sort of like little knobs and such. I would paint it up, dry brush it, and probably call it good. Unless you can find some really good references online, which I don't know if you can, just because of the nature of the Chinese military, not being super open with sharing stuff like that. Yeah, but quite basic. I don't know if Quinto will do a set for this. If they do, awesome. This is a nice flat surface. Sand it smooth and put on those 3D printed instruments. That is the instrument panel or one of the instrument panels. Again, quite basic. Nothing really to write home about. There's the other one. And I believe Trumpeter gives you decals for these. Yes, they do. They give you decals for them. Uh, we'll take a look in a minute. But plenty of setting solution. Use a stiff brush to sort of dab them down a little bit. I think you'll be okay. But yeah, that's that. That's the um, that's the rotor hub. This was this center section was wrapped in plastic because there are some pretty delicate pins down here. So if you do get this kit, try not to break them. And then we have the all important clear sprue. So Trumpeter has been at least all their modern kits are pretty well known for doing pretty good clear parts. So these are obviously the sides. They are a pretty complex curve. There's a little bit of waviness in there, but I would suspect that when the framing's painted up, when you're looking at it close up and not under really bright lights like this, close up, you can look at my hand through that, and I think it's okay, honestly. This is the canopy section. These straight areas are perfectly clear. You can see my finger through that. And then the edges, very similar to this, have a little bit of waviness in them. This section, I believe, has like a slider window that opens or some kind of reinforcement on the inside. I don't know how you're going to paint that. Is it molded on the inside or is it molded on the outside? It's molded on the outside. So 
you might be doing some creative masking to get that painted, whatever that is. That looks like a little slider window that they can open. So yeah, creative masking there, but take it slow. I think you'll be okay. This, this is nice because the framing is all molded with the glass. You're not trying to put framing glass together on the front of the model and therefore creating an alignment nightmare. So this is, this is I think, a good option for doing this. Yeah, so those are all the major parts. We'll take a look at the photo etch real quick. Photo etch is a small sprue, nothing crazy here. Some, uh, I think these go to the rotor head or the tail rotor, something like a reinforcement plate. Seat belts, quite basic. Some uh, little reinforcement plates. The real highlight of this is these photo etch done windshield wipers, which are gonna look nicer than anything you're gonna get in plastic. I wish all kits would do this, or all kits of aircraft that have windshield wipers would come like this. You get the uh, etched arms, as well as the, or the etched, like, the, 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 the mechanism, as well as the blades themselves, which look really nice. You're never gonna get that in plastic. So yeah, those are the parts. And then we'll take a look at the decals, which are on a small sheet that we're going to cut. Pretty basic sheet of decals, but everything is very sharply done here. So you have two, your markings for two aircraft. Um, you have some metallic decals here that go to maybe some no-step areas. And then you have the Chinese roundel, as well as, I think these are squadron emblems, as well as the cockpit instrument displays. These actually look pretty good. Uh, how well they'll settle down over all that complex detail is yet to be seen, but these do look nice on the sheet. And also what's nice I like is that you can actually read these sort of rescue warnings and also I think that's a, yeah, these are rescue warnings. That's a, that's just a warning. These are maintenance stencils down here. Everything is readable, which is nice. Obviously these aren't readable, but the red text is, which is nice. Everything else very sharply printed. These are sort of canopy seals right there that go around the glass and yeah. So that's, that's about it. That's Trumpeter's 148 scale Z10 attack helicopter, Chinese Apache, Chinese Cobra, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, looks to be a very nice kit. I mean, very sort of non-mainstream uh, model. You don't really expect to see a kit of something like this. Usually you just see Apaches, Cobras, stuff like that, Tiger. Um, but yeah, this should be fun to build. Um, if you're into sort of helicopters and want something pretty esoteric, for your collection, I would say this is the kit for you. And most of Trumpeter's kits, modern kits at least, go together very well, test fit, um, and I think you'll be okay. But yeah, look for a build of this on the channel coming up in the next few months. Again, I probably will not be doing one of those all black schemes. I'll most likely be doing one of the black and tan sort of newer schemes or prototype schemes or whatever. But yeah, Again, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this kit, you're curious about what weapons it comes with, or you're curious about a particular part, um, feel free to leave a comment below. Otherwise, thanks again for watching, and uh, see you next time. Take care. Bye.